Now, once we have a table of pKa's, we can predict the results of a given acid-base reaction. Now, we're going to look at two ways of, of uh, predicting this. One is qualitative. In other words, we're just going to determine which side of the equilibrium is favored. And then one is more quantitative, where we can even get a rough estimate of the value of K equilibrium. All right, so to start with, when we're making our predictions, we need to remember that Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions are equilibria. And in an equilibrium, we really don't have particularly a no reaction. Instead, what we have is a reaction side that's favored and a reaction side that's disfavored. So it's really not correct to say, oh, this acid, this base, would they react? In theory, any acid should be able to react with any base. It's just that the reaction might be so small that the product side would be really so disfavored that we would essentially not see any. So what we want to do is we want to determine our acid and our base, and then using the Bronsted-Lowry definition, remove a hydrogen from the acid to create the conjugate base, Re add a hydrogen plus to the base to create the conjugate acid. What we're then going to see is that we are going to have an acid on the reactant side and an acid on the product side. So we'll call the acid on the reactant side the reactant acid, and we'll call the acid on the product side the product acid. In theory, the product acid could also be called the conjugate acid. So what we're then going to do is compare the acid strength of the two acids, the product acid and the reactant acid, by looking them up on the pKa table. So just remember, our reactant acid is CH3COOH, acetic acid, and our product acid is hydronium ion. If we look on the table then, we can see that hydronium ion is right here, and it has a pKa of minus 1.7. Acetic acid is right here, and it has a pKa of 4.8. Well, minus 1.7 is more negative than 4.8. It's higher up in this column, so hydronium is the stronger acid. Why is that important? Well, it turns out acid-base equilibria favor the side with the weaker acid. So since this is the stronger acid on the product side, the reactants would be favored. So what we would observe is when we put acetic acid into water, we only make a very small amount of these substances, but we don't make zero. We can calculate that we make a measurable finite amount of products. So this is not a no reaction, it's a product side is disfavored reaction. We can do sim something similar, recalling that K equilibrium tells us the relative concentrations of products and reactants. So we have a formula using the pKa to calculate the approximate value of K equilibrium. Now I'm going to caution you, this is not exact. It doesn't take into account um, activities and things like that, but it's a pretty good ballpark figure. The equation looks like this. K equilibrium is approximately equal to 10 raised to the power of pK of the product acid minus pK of the reactant acid. Now, some of you are going to want to try to convert this into a decimal or something else. Don't do that. Just leave it as 10 to a number. That will be good enough. We deal with orders of magnitude in acid-base chemistry. So, leave it in exponential format. Here's an example. Here's CH3OH, which by our naming rules we should call methanol, and here's hydrogen chloride. It's not hydrochloric acid because it's not dissolved in water. We call it hydrogen chloride. It's actually a gas. To make them react, we would actually bubble this gas through the methanol. Now, methanol in this case could do a reaction, Bronsted-Lowry, with hydrogen chloride, where it used one of its lone pairs 
to come out and make a bond to this hydrogen and then the bond between them would go onto the chlorine. That would create this species where our original methyl methanol has one additional bond to a hydrogen and one fewer lone pairs and it would have a positive charge. It's in fact very similar to hydronium. Then it would create chloride minus and that would be our conjugate base. So now when we look this is the acid on the reactant side this is the base so the related species will be the acid on the product side or the conjugate acid. So this is our product acid. So we have a reactant acid and a product acid. What we're going to do first is we're going to look up the pKa numbers for those on the pKa table. Let me show that to you really quickly. Here's our pKa table. Here's hydrogen chloride. The pKa value is negative 7. And here is CH3OH2, positive ion. And the pKa value for that is negative 2. Don't make the mistake of looking up this number. This is CH3OH acting as a base. But we want to look for what we get when it... I'm sorry, this is CH3OH acting as the acid. We don't have CH3OH as the acid. We have CH3OH acting like the base right here. Here is the related acid. Okay, so now we have those two numbers. So now what we're going to do is just very simple math. K equilibrium is going to be equal to 10 raised to the power of pKa of the product acid, which is negative 2, minus the pKa of the reactant acid. And notice that what we're going to be doing is subtracting a negative number. That means we add 7 to negative 2 and we get positive 5. 10 to the positive 5th. Now, 10 to the positive 5th is a number, it's a 100,000. Okay, but what does that number mean? And this is where this becomes so useful. One of the things that, that may not have been stressed when you discussed equilibria in general chemistry is the fact that basically K equilibrium is a ratio of how much or how many of the products do we have divided by how many of the reactants we have at equilibrium. It's a ratio of how much we have on each side of the equation. So if we look at a number like 10 to the fifth, 10 to the fifth can be written as a fraction by just putting a line and putting the number one underneath. So if we then look at it as representing this fraction, what we see is we have 10 to the fifth product. We have 100,000 product species for every one reactant left over. Now, since we have the same number of each, and if we assume we put them in, in a one-to-one -one ratio, we can get basically an exact count of how many of these ha we have and how many left over. And you can see that we would have a vanishingly small amount of these left over. This is essentially a 100% reaction out to several sig figs. This is really useful to know. Now, what if we ended up with a negative exponent? Well, then what we would do is we would just take that negative exponent number, 10 to the minus 7th, we would put 10 to the 7th underneath and 1 on top. So that would tell us that we would have 10 to the 7th reactants over one product. Essentially, we get almost no product form. 